Well, it's two days later, and we're back down to the river. We brought uh, five large trash cans and a medium size down of compost. Uh, they're about two thirds full, maybe a couple of them are three quarters. There was still some place that needed to have it put down. Today we're going to uh, put in our tomato steaks. We've got to repair a few of them. Everybody needs a shed of some kind. This one hasn't been cleaned out in years. But that's the tomato steaks I've been using. Everybody said, well, that's pretty expensive to buy two by two uh, steaks. And I said, well, I've been using these for 20 some years, so I think the cost is down to pennies a year per steak or less. You might not be able to see too much of this because it's a little bit dark in there, but there's a little two foot. Uh, fence on stakes metal stakes and uh, we have to do that because we do have a few bunny rabbits around here and when you plant beans and all they'll just eat them to where there's nothing left I've done I've done a thing on cloches and we generally put those down when we plant beans but anyway we got to sharpen the ends on some of these and uh, we put them in with a uh, pull one out so you can see it. Years ago, I used to get on a ladder. These are eight feet tall. I used to get on a ladder and beat these into the ground. And it, uh, being a little slow with it, it took me, uh, I'd hate to say it, but probably 12 years to figure out that if I just put a piece of this two by two on the side with deck screws in it that I could hold it right there and hit that with a sledgehammer and it would be a lot easier than climbing on top of a ladder and doing it. So we're going to have to replace some of those because every now and then the screws rust out although the new deck screws will hold up a lot better than the old ones and they'll shear off and we'll have to uh, put a few new hammer blocks on them. We'll be back with you in a while. Part of our work down, day down here today is a lot of these after a while lose the sharp ends so we've had to cut some sharp ends on them and then these boards that I screw onto the side to drive them in the ground over time they'll split or, or the screws will pull out and then we'll have to put new boards on them and we had to do that today. And that's our tomato steaks. And on the last row is pepper steaks. And our tomatoes will be taller than those steaks. We brought some more compost down today. This row needed some. And in an earlier video I told you that this was the weakest part of my garden. Well part of helping it is to put some compost here. I will also take some compost out of this pile beside me when we get the top off of it and that will hopefully produce produce off of this section just as much as it does off of that section. Well that's a view of the stakes and the rows. Try to get the stakes up pretty square and they look pretty square. And the first little row over here, we had to put some compost on it because we didn't have enough the other day. Before we left uh, on Wednesday, today's Friday, we put up these two fences. Ten, they're about 10 feet long each one, so that's uh, 40 feet of fences, and we'll grow cucumbers on them. We won't plant all the seeds at one time. We'll stagger them out about 10 days or two weeks apart. And that way we won't be up to our ears and cucumbers and then have none. We'll put a couple more little fences up somewhere else so that we'll have cucumbers all season. Thanks for watching. Alright. We're having to rejuvenate our whiskey barrels. See we got one there, one there, one there, one there that we got a volunteer Digitalis Fox Club coming up in. Now this is what we've taken out. And you can tell it's pretty lifeless, pretty gone. 
what you want to do is dig down in here until it gets to where it's no longer lifeless. In fact, we're going to take a little more out of this. But see, that's got a little more substance to it. This is nothing. And then we had our compost. We had a very little bit of lime because it's like one to two pounds for 100 square feet and these little pots are probably three square feet. And then we put a little osmocote time release fertilizer in it. And then we take a trowel and mix it all up. And when you mix it all up, it should look like that. If you stare really hard, you might see some of those little yellow osmocotes. But that has been mixed up with the soil that's underneath. It's ready for us to put some marigolds in it. Thanks for watching. When you have existing shrubs permanently planted in pots like this, you need to get all the pine tags and uh, debris out the top. We'll move a piece of driftwood and put it back when I'm finished. And what you need to do is just side dress it with some compost and a little bit of a uh, osmo coat and maybe just a tiny, tiny bit of lime and uh, work it into the soil. And you really shouldn't be up to the trunk. You don't want to cover up the trunk that's already exposed because that's where it naturally wants to grow. And when you put uh, mulch around your trees and landscapes, shrubs, leave a space between the... the uh, the stuff in the bed you don't want the uh, pine bark mulch or any kind of mulch to be up against the bark it'll soften the bark and over time creatures and disease can get in it and kill the whole plant uh, you see it everywhere you go every Walmart uh, Mickey D's have got mulch right up against the bark but it will slowly uh, the bark will stay wet and after a while it'll decay and pretty soon you'll lose it so we're just going to side dress this today and a little bit of fertilizer and a little lime and it'll be good for another year or so.